In this tutorial, we're going to look at the blend mode within MoGraph's cloner object. And this is really handy when you want to blend between two different states of an object. Uh, one of the very basic places where this can come in handy is say we have a tube here and we want to create concentric tubes. Well, if I go ahead and place this tube into a cloner object, and we'll go ahead and remove the position offset, and instead we'll use a scale offset of something like 125%, uh, you may have run into this problem before. What we're actually getting is that each additional tube, the thickness of the tube is actually scaling as well. So we end up with an overlapping mess rather than concentric tubes. Uh, so instead, what we'll do is remove the scaling here and use the blend mode. What we need to do is just create an additional copy of the tube and we need to create the final state that we want the tube to be in, the outermost tube. So let's say that we want the outermost tube to be 300, and again, we still want that radius to be 5, so we're going to make this one 305. Actually, we need to change the outer radius first, and then we'll change the inner. So now we have the inner and the outer, and they're the same exact radius. This one needs more rotation segments, it looks like, uh, so that it's smoother. Uh, and now what we want to do is actually blend between those. So we go back up to the cloner and we switch this clones option from iterate into blend. And now you can see that it is smoothly blending between each of those values and we're maintaining the same thickness on each of the rings. And we can increase the count here as much as we want and it's actually going to fit them in between those two tubes that we've created. And also, by the way, I adjusted the rotation segments on this, and it's smoothly interpolating that attribute as well. If we make this cloner editable, this is a good way to see what's going on with your cloner. You can see that that one's 50, 55, and it has a rotation segments of 36. Let's go somewhere here in the middle. And you can see here we've got 175, 180 with 54 segments. And here at the end, we've got 300, 305 with 72 segments. So it's going to smoothly interpolate any of the attributes on the objects between the first object and the second object that you provide. Let's look at one more example of what we can do with this. I'm going to go ahead and create another new cloner. We'll go ahead and turn off all those tubes. And we'll create another new cloner. And I'm going to put this snowflake in that I created using most blinds turtle mode in a previous tutorial. So we'll go ahead and drop that into the cloner. And uh, here I'm going to go ahead and switch this into, well, let's leave it linear for now. Uh, and, but let's go along the x-axis. I'm going to go 250 and 0. And we'll go ahead and transform this to rotate it up 90 degrees. So what I can do is go in and actually create multiple versions of this snowflake. Let's go into the values here, and uh, in this first one, let's make the growth uh, something like 3, and the movement, uh, we'll make that a little bigger. And now if I go ahead and switch the cloner into blend mode, you can see that it is blending between this first snowflake that I created and the third. It's basically blending the values here in the values tab of the most blind. And so if I go ahead and create additional snowflakes, you can see that we get all different variations of the snowflake that are all a smooth blend between those values. Cloner's blend mode gets even more powerful when you combine it with MoGraph's effectors, and that's what we're going to cover in the next tutorial.